Okay. Let's get to Scotty. Yeah, let's get to him. Uh, we are very excited about this, folks. Uh, Scott Rintoul of Unreal West Coast Express uh, joining us now with a Meet Me in the Kitchen book behind him. Very nice. It's a sign. It's no book. It's a po- It's another podcast I host, actually. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. Scotty, it's uh, it's nice to get you here on the show. Obviously, I mean the media tour for you has been nuts. <laughs> it's been wild everywhere <laughs> I look. I look today. You're on one of our uh, brother shows in Calgary with Barnburner over there. So I'm just like, uh, it must be a, a wild time for you. But I'll tell you, Scotty, coming on here. It's not television. It's not radio. You're with the podcast crowd right now here on the Canucks Conversation. So we're excited to get you on here for the podcast listeners. Let's just get started with the idea for this this series that you're putting out, West Coast Express. Where did it come from? Because you've been around this market for a long time. I'm curious to what drove you to the point of saying, I want to do a series about the West Coast Express. Okay, so before I answer the question, you two have both reached out to me. When you heard that this series was coming out, what was your first reaction? I'll go first. I was really excited because, okay, so Scott, you know, I'm not super old. Um, (laughs) I was kind of just starting to like the Canucks when the West Coast Express was getting almost dismantled, right? Like when it was the beginning of the end. And again, I know we're going to talk about it a lot in the, uh, in the series that you did, but that was when I started to be a Canucks fan and I was playing the old video games and it was like, oh, this line's one of the best in the game. I should be using them. And that was kind of how I started to become like, oh, okay, these are these are some of my favorite players here. And that's why I really wanted to listen to it because this, this era is something that I didn't get to experience from the start, obviously. Like listening to episodes one and two, I wasn't alive for anything that is being said in it. Like I was listening to it and I was like, wow, like I knew this happened, but to hear the people who were there saying it, that was why I was interested and that's why I am liking it so far. Yeah, I would have to say that I was excited to see coverage of that be modernized, like to see it put into podcast form and into a series. I was pretty excited from that aspect of it. Awesome. So the reason you guys just mentioned and the connection that you talked about quads, that's why I wanted to do this. It's a great story to begin with. Like just if you gave somebody the pitch line of, okay, here's the deal. Three players acquired by three different general managers, two years apart, didn't work out with their original organizations, wind up on the best line in hockey. Like that in itself from a sports perspective is a great pitch. Then there's all of the ups and downs that happen along the way. The successes, the playoff failures, the setbacks, the overcoming adversity. There's a lot of that involved as well. From a personal standpoint, I wanted to dig into something long form. Most of my career has been spent doing things where, all right, we finished that. What's happening tomorrow? What are we on to the next day? And you guys know this as well with what you're doing right now. You get involved in conversations that you want to continue, but you can't because you have time constraints or you're filing post game or whatever it happens to be with what your job is. This was an opportunity to sit down with these players, coaches, managers, media, and talk for an hour, talk for an hour and a half, and just get into some of their memories and their thoughts about some of the happenings that occurred along the way. And Quads, I'm really happy with you, what you brought up that's episodes one and two, because when I originally dreamed up this project, I thought, all right, we're going to talk about the great story I outlined for you at the beginning. But the more I thought about it, the more I decided you can't show people the true impact of this line and that team unless you show them how bad it got. And I know that there's a lot of Canucks fans listening right now that are thinking this is the worst it's ever been. It's not. I'm telling you right now, it's not. You can look at the record and you can look at some of the playoff um, absences over the last number of years, but people are still going to games. People are still very engaged in the conversations you guys have multiple times a week. There was a point in the late 90s where people in Vancouver and B.C., really didn't want anything to do with the Vancouver Canucks. It's hard to imagine now, but part of the reason I don't think it'll ever go back there is because of this team and that line. The attention on the Vancouver Canucks and the franchise overall changed dramatically because of these players. Okay, so I want to break this down because I listened to episode one and two already, and... Also, fantastic job on episode two. The whole, all the Messier stuff. I haven't was... been to two yet. Be sorry, careful. Sorry, sorry. I, well, I, won't, I won't spoil anything. And, and, and Scotty, without spoiling anything, I guess my question for you, and as someone just listening to the podcast that now has the pleasure of interviewing you about it, what 
like when you were doing it, what surprised you the most? Was there any conversation that you had where you were just kind of taken aback and said like, holy cow, I wasn't expecting this person to give me what they just gave me? Well, Wayne Gretzky's at the top of that list and he's in episode number one. And I won't spoil why he's in episode number one for those who don't know, but the great one himself is there. And the most surprised, I haven't told this story yet in any forum, but I'll tell it to you right now. So I had reached out to a mutual friend about the possibility of getting 99 on. And the friend said, look, shoot me a couple of questions. I'll send them his way and I'll give him your contact info. And if he calls, then great. And if not, well, I guess he's got other stuff going on. So a few weeks later, my phone rings and we all have the phone that rings right now. And it says, you know, Missouri calling or, you know, Western New York, whatever it is. Well, this one came up with a California ID and normally you don't pick those up. And I looked at my wife and it was the middle of a day in the summer. And I went, I'm going to take this call. Just, I got a gut feeling and I picked it up and on the other end, is Wayne Gretzky. He doesn't announce himself as Wayne Gretzky. He just starts talking and says, yeah, I got a message that perhaps you wanted to talk. And I do remember a little bit about that time. And, and so he never even says it's Wayne Gretzky. So we get into this conversation, which is awesome. And he says, okay, I thought it was a book, but a podcast, that sounds great. Totally willing to do it. I've got to go to LA for three or four days, but then why don't we line something up for Monday or Tuesday? Well, my heart drops because I'm going to a wedding in Europe on the Saturday. So I literally have to say to Wayne Gretzky, I'm really sorry. I'm taking my wife to Europe. We're going to a wedding this weekend. I'm not going to be here next week. And I'm fully expecting this. Well, it's too bad. It's not going to work out. I wish you all the best. Nice to meet you. Instead, Wayne Gretzky becomes the even greater one in my mind because he goes, Oh, I had no idea. Take your wife to Europe, have an incredible time. And well, you've got my number now. So when you get back, just text me and we'll line something up. Wayne Gretzky awesome. telling me, yeah, just text me when you get back. It was a surreal moment, guys. You got to big time the great one. That is that is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what fantastic. Um, okay, so uh, sorry, I'll let you get a question eventually, Chris. No, do your thing. You're two episodes in. You well, I, I'm really, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Um, and I'm glad you said uh, you're not going to spoil the Gretzky thing because I was literally about to with my next question, but uh, I won't do that instead. So I guess what I want to ask you, Scott, is just how long of a process was this for you? Like from start to finish and maybe take our listeners through the process of putting it all together. Yeah. So originally I had the idea a few years ago, but then because of my work situation, I didn't have the free time to do it. I was going to do this three or four years ago. And so I put it on the shelf. And then when my job changed about a year and a quarter ago, 15 months ago, I guess it was, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. And I decided I'd go out on my own and take on some new endeavors that I hadn't tried before. And I just decided literally a year ago, you know what? This has been sitting in my brain long enough. Let's do it. So Marcus Naslin, Todd Bertuzzi, Brendan Morrison were my first calls in that order. And each of them agreed to do an interview. And once I got that, I started calling on the other guys that I thought were the pillars of this. And the other two for me were Mark Crawford and Brian Burke. I figured if I get those five people... I can tell this story well. Anything else I get is going to be awesome. But if I get those five people, I can tell the story well. Like those are the foundation of it for me. And then the Sedins were happy to come on board. Ed Jovanovsky, go down the list of media names, guys from the past that helped me tell the story early, like Dave Babich and Corey Hirsch, Arthur Griffiths coming on to explain how ownership changed. And while that might seem like a really minor point to the Canucks fan out there, it set the table for everything that happened with the downfall of the Canucks and then the Canucks to become what they did with Naslin, Bertuzzi, Morrison. So it's a really important part of the story. Could I have done this project quicker? Probably, but I had other stuff going on. I had other opportunities that I was looking at and, and executing on at the same time. So this took me the better part of a year to get all together and then get it to the point where we could actually put episodes out there. Well, Scott, we got a lot of people in here in the chat uh, excited to see you here on the show because they've, they've watched you in Vancouver Media for a long time. Is there any thought of doing this, something else? Like, you have, you're one of the guys who knows Vancouver sports history more than anybody. So, like, it's now that you've accomplished and, you know, put out this product, is this something you want to keep doing? It is. And I will say, and I hope this doesn't disappoint too many people in the Canucks nation that's listening right now, but these stories might expand beyond Vancouver, beyond hockey, 
for that matter. I think there's so many great stories out there, guys. And I'm of the opinion that we're living in this time where people are so fast onto the next one and what's happening tomorrow and, and forget about what happened yesterday that we don't spend enough time actually diving into longer form stories that people don't know a lot about or don't have perspective on. And so that's what this process has been like for me. I'd love to do more of this. I have really enjoyed the process. It's not easy. It's a lot of legwork and you don't always get everything you want, but man, is it rewarding to have those conversations, to put something cool together and then put it out to the world and be proud of it. And whether it's received extremely well or not, and so far it certainly has been, and I appreciate that you guys are into it as well. When you're proud to put that product out there and just share it with everybody, it's a pretty cool feeling. I'm sure that uh, that microphone there and your camera has been getting a workout from how many things yeah. we've seen. <laughs> uh, Dan yeah. days here. I know Sino Chicken here says, can Scott uh, can Scotty produce a deep dive podcast in the Boudreaux era? Because that would be must listen. So I'm sure I'll, we'll give you some time to collect your information on that. But Scotty, this has been great. Really appreciate you coming on here. And uh, I'll have to get to episode two after uh, after we record here pretty much, actually. So thanks for taking the time, Scotty. Anytime. I'm just going to give a quick plug. This is the podcast world, so people already get it, but Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon, wherever you get your podcast, you will find this. You can also go to unrealsports.com, unreal with two E's, unrealsports.com, and you can find everything there. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. You betcha. It was great. And by the way, I seen you updated and put numbers on the episodes. People were uh, excited about <laughs> yeah. that online today. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks, Scotty. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, guys.